super excited to show you this latest tractor that we just got in its Kubota Grand L4060 with only about 47 hours on it and I am having a another conflict, an internal conflict here between selling it or keeping it. I'm sure I will sell it. It's, I, it's another one I want to do projects with, but it's like, man, if I do anything with it, <laughs> I'm going to get it dirty, scrape some paint off of something. And I know that's what they're made for, but it's a 2018 47 hours and it's just, just gorgeous. I mean, look at this up close. Still has all the little nubs on the tires. I mean, this thing just has not been used. It's one of those rare finds. Now this gentleman, I was able to get some information on. It's just one of those situations. He has a business. He's got other machines and this was always kind of just the odd man out coming from the tractor world hard to believe it you know but um, hey good for me good for somebody who's gonna buy it you're getting a sweet machine and you know you go buy this new and it's gonna be roughly 20 grand more than what we're gonna sell it for so it's a significant savings compared to new uh, let's take you a little on a little tour of this machine we'll start up front kind of work our way towards the back I suppose but um, this is a heavy duty bucket that's on this Kubota and you see this this rolled or this tube that's on top very strong reinforced rigid uh, thick uh, reinforcing on the sides as well to give you extra strength there so it's not going to bend on the sides and then of course the bottom does have the bolt-on cutting edge that's on there as well you can see just how filthy and how mistreated this bucket's been I'm, I'm kidding of course but uh, on the back side gonna have the skid steer quick attach Okay, so this is just gonna have the two levers. Now, skid steer quick attach is skid steer quick attach. All right, it's the same dimensions whether you're on a little subcompact or even on uh, a big Kubota M4 or even the skid steers. Now, you still have to watch your weight of the attachment, but this is gonna be a pretty capable loader. You can see on that side, it says it over here as well, the LA805 loader. And so the 805 is actually the amount of kilograms the loader is rated to lift to max height at the pin, or right here at the, at the pivot point all the way up. Unrealistic, because you're not lifting anything back here, but it's just how they rate them, so you can at least get an apples to apples comparison against other tractors that you're shopping. Uh, up here as well, and again, I always point this out, we have new viewers all the time, look for something here that's mounted on the torque tube, all right? You see a couple of connections, that's gonna mean you have a third function on there to run a grapple. If you see this, more than likely you have a thumb control as well on your loader joystick, so you can push a button to open the jaws of the grapple, push another button to close the jaws of the grapple. Uh, really nice setup. This is a, an extra cost that's not standard on these tractors. And so uh, really nice to see that when you're shopping in the used market in particular, this means extra value, all right? Um, steel panels all around, okay? Steel hood, obviously the loader. Uh, the fenders are steel too. The top of the cab is gonna be plastic. This thing is still nice and shiny. It was stored inside his garage. Um, it was just a baby that was just kept in there and, and, and pampered, as you can see. There's no dents, there's no scratches, there's dust. That, that's it, just a little bit of dust. Very clean all around. Now this loader is quick park. Chris, why don't you come over here? I'll show you, the, uh, show you guys the hydraulic connections that are on here. But uh, quick park, they're all going to be quick park these days, except for the, the John Deere 3E series. Everything else is, is quick park. There's probably something else that, out there that's not, but when you see these stands right here, okay, you just unpin them, swap them down, pin them into place, and that's going to be your parking stands if you ever wanted to take the loader off. Rarely going to happen for most folks, but you have that capability to do it. Right here's your um, bucket level indicator, okay? So you can unscrew this and adjust it if you have like a different attachment. If you're running pallet forks a lot, or if you're running a snow push in the winter, or your bucket, or you can you can mark it and have other visual indicators on there too, so you know when your bucket or your tool is level. So another visual indicator for you to know that this has a third function is always, if you can get a picture, because it's amazing how many dealers and how many individuals don't take good pictures of equipment. So you have to look for the clues. And you can see six hoses on here. So if you only had a picture of this area and you see six hoses, well, four of them are the basic connections, okay? To raise and lower the front end loader and then to curl and roll the bucket. But you have an extra set here, which is for that third function that's up front. And there's a quick disconnect for those as well. So if you take the loader off, you can quick disconnect everything and have it out of your way. A very convenient fuel fill location, all right? A lot of tractors, you'll have it up top here in the hood or on the back of the fender. And depending on how you're filling your tractor, if you have a, a, a big transfer tank or something, that's 
doesn't matter as much, but if you're having to haul cans up top, that can be a pain, so it is nicer to have it down, down lower. Uh, both doors open. Is this one unlocked? Yep, it is, okay. Uh, doors on both sides. Oh, I will point out though, Chris, come in here and take a look. The John Deere cabs, I don't know about the others, you guys probably know that, um, don't have a piston to hold the door open, not touching it. On the John Deere cabs, on the passenger side, you gotta hold it open or it wants to come back closed. So, I mean, how much is that when you're buying that at cost? Is that like five bucks or something for a manufacturer to do that? It can't be that much money. Kubota does it the right way. You have a step here as well. You could go in the cab on the passenger side if you need to. You kind of got to go over the pedals and in between the handle and the steering wheel. It's kind of a tight fit to get in there, but you have that capability. Uh, some good guard protection down here too. I think, uh, Chris, get an angle from this side. You have guards in a couple different areas. Number one, down here, you have a nice guard in front of uh, the hydraulic lines and then wrapped around the hydraulic lines here too. So some good protection there. You're right behind a tire, so you know this is going to give you the protection for the most part, but if branches then spring up or something else, you have the extra stuff. Then looking up front, you have some guard protection right here on the front axle as well. So that's a nice touch, I think. I would assume this is standard, it is bolted on, but if you dented it or banged it up, you can get a replacement. Not the thickest metal, not the thickest steel that's on there, but it is pretty stout. Uh, hood release right here since I'm staring at it. Actually, do I need to open that? Yeah, probably need to open this grill guard. You gotta open up the grill guards. Bless you, Chris. Open up the grill guard, then you can pop open the, the hood. Take a look underneath. And there you go, and again, another reason to maybe want to have to take the loader off. If you had to do some major service in your engine compartment, or even, well, you can get in the battery and replace it if you needed to, but uh, air filter back there. Overall, pretty accessible for your routine maintenance and, and fluid filter checks, all that kind of stuff. Battery is nice right up front, relatively accessible. You're not going to see it much better than that, in my opinion. One piece hood is nice. Clean though, clean all around. You can tell he didn't, well, 47 hours, he just didn't use it much at all. Close that back up, pop that back into place. And look at, uh, look at these, the cylinder protection, the hose protection, I should say. You have your exposed hoses here. One of the things I really like about um, the protection of all the hydraulic lines though, everything is, for the most part, where it can be protected. You have the cover, the nice cover going across here. They're kind of tucked underneath these lines are for that location and going back that way. And they're routed inside the loader arm, okay? Right inside here and they'll pop out, they pop out up here, uh, kind of in this area to get over to the connections, but a lot, of protection with these hydraulic lines, which, well, if you get into some nasty stuff, you know how easy it is to snag something. So the more you can have those hidden and out of the way, the better off you're gonna be. These are the R4 tires too, by the way, the common industrial size tires that are on there. Another visual clue, all right? If you don't know, if you can see a sticker like this on there, that says rim guard, all right? If you just see a sticker, it looks like kind of like an oval like that, more than likely, it's rim guard that's in there. That means there's beet juice, okay? There's liquid ballast to fill on these tires, so a lot of extra weight. We're sponsored by rim guard, okay? For good reason. Every tractor needs ballast weight. I don't care what tractor it is. And you get liquid ballast in there. It's out of the way. It's hidden. It's hundreds and hundreds of pounds. There's probably, could be seven, 800 pounds, somewhere in that range uh, between both these back tires. So that gives you, when you're lifting all that weight with the front end loader, it gives you a lot of counterweight back here to stabilize you. Oop. Uh, what else in the cab? We have the front and the rear work lights. You got your flashers up top, mirrors on here, antenna. Okay, uh, flashers here as well. That's steel. Okay, steel fenders on there, nice and clean. We do have the three point arms for this, but they're off right now. It just has the, the backhoe mounted to it. You take the three point arms off when you mount the backhoe on here. Backhoe does have the optional pads on here all right so if you are on, on a hard surface like concrete asphalt that kind of stuff gives that surface some extra protection and is not going to damage it so they're, they're nice and beefy and well hardly used like everything else on here a lot of grease points all around too big beefy backhoe i believe we were looking this up there were two backhoe models weren't there chris 
Yeah, so this is the better of the two backhoe models, the BH92 that's on here. Uh, full specs online about that and what it can do. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty big backhoe for a tractor, I'll tell you that. Separate seat, of course, and uh, one folk, or one folk, one folk was commenting that his dealer told him that he couldn't get the cab and the backhoe on this model. So this is visual proof, visual proof that you can get the backhoe and the cab on, on the same tractor. So it's always worth validating, right? If somebody tells you you can't, hmm, trust but verify. This one has a mechanical thumb, all right, another add-on. So you can see it's got the provision for it, so you can mount it if you want to. So these backhoes don't come standard with it, but you can bolt it on. And that's what this one has here. They're multiple position. So you can mount this, this thumb in two different positions by pulling that pin and putting it in the other location if you want to. And then of course it does come with a bucket. These are replaceable and you can get different size on there and everything else. You just pop it off uh, right there and put a new one on. Uh, let's take a look at the inside of the tractor. I think we've pretty much given you a good walk around. HST, I guess we're talking about visual indicators when you're shopping. You'll see GST, which is glide shift transmission as well. If the listing doesn't say and you're trying to figure it out, if you can't see the foot pedal on there, kind of the treadle pedal, then look for this symbol here. Hydrostatic transmission, that's what that is. And that'll, uh, that'll be all you need to know to verify that. Now for visual reference, I am six foot three, a little bit less than 200 pounds. This is me inside the cab, headroom here, um, plenty of space, don't feel cramped at all. The seat is all the way back right now. Has tilt steering as you can see. Horn doesn't work unless it's on, I think. But the horn does work. So one of the cool things that I really like about the Grand L series from Kubota is that you may see this and think it's a power shift, right? But it's not. It's actually a high and low adjustment within each range. So you have a three range transmission with high, medium, and low, but then even within low range, you can, there's like a high low and there's a low low. And in medium, there's a high medium and a low medium and same with high, there's a high high and a low high. So you almost have a six range because of that. Pretty darn cool. Um, I do actually like the treadle pedal design in the Grandel way better. It's the best one by far and pretty close. It's still not the same, but pretty close to the side-by-side uh, -side twin touch that's on, on uh, John Deere, Coyote, and a lot of the others that are out there. Way better than the traditional treadle pedal. Gonna have a split brake down here too. They are tied together now. We talked about the tilt steering. This is your parking brake and your, uh, your, your regen controls and flashers. Uh, what's on this side? Here's our range. Select, okay. So again, low, medium, and high. Seat belt, of course. Two and four wheel drive. Okay, or front wheel assist. I don't think this, it just has a visual indicator, doesn't actually say. Um, locking rear differential. Got some cubby storage right here. Uh, let's see, this window opens up, the back window opens up, the other corner window opens up. Vents, HVAC controls, radio all up top, and a dome light. All your vents uh, in this model as well are all around, all on the top, okay? So nothing down low. Over on the right hand side, got our loader joystick, all right? And so again, that's gonna have the, uh, the integrated buttons for the third function, all right? To open and close the jaws of a grapple or angle a hydraulic plow blade, or you know, on this size machine, you can even run a, a loader mounted auger if you want to. Gonna have your throttle control right here. So turtle is slow, rabbit is revved all the way up. Your rock shaft control, otherwise known as your three point control to raise and lower that. Uh, yellow right here will turn your rear PTO on and off. These slots are actually for rear remotes. So if you had rear remotes on here, not power beyond, but like a, a fourth and a fifth function, then there would be a remote that comes up here for either one of those to control that. Um, this may be for something similar. I'm not 100% sure. Some light controls, cup holder, 12 volt convenience outlet. Some other tractors do have a bit more storage, I feel like, in them. Um, I almost feel like they could have found a way to put another, maybe something like this over on, on this side too and take advantage of the corner. 
you can never have too much storage, you know? So, uh, oh, cruise control's on the other side. That's just a little button there. But overall, we've talked about these cabs before. They are, I don't think you're going to find a nicer cab. You know, I mean, I would put the John Deere cabs on the same level. Incredibly nice, but they're, everything's tight. There's no rattles. Everything's just solid and feels stout. You have great visibility with the full glass all the way down to the floorboard. It's besides thin little strips of steel here in the corners. And then you have the bracing here for kind of your ROPs that's in there. I mean, it's it's good visibility. I mean, even down back behind you, it's it's just about being like on an open station, um, but with a full HVAC cab. So on that note, that is uh, about all we have to say about this guy. An absolute gem of a tractor. Very hard to find, especially something that's this low hours for a huge savings over new. We ship tractors all over the country, that's what we do ship attachments all over the country as well. So if you're looking for a tractor, whether it's this one or something different, go to goodworkstractors.com, see what we have for sale. We can build out a package if you want to get some other attachments to go along with it. Or if you have a tractor and you're just looking for some attachments, we can help you there too. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.